Revelation chapter one, let's go. Um, as you're going there, uh, I see a lot of people I don't recognize uh, today. And so if you are new here, uh, welcome. My name is Darren, uh, one of the pastors here at the church. Uh, you're, gonna love, you're gonna love me when you get to know me. Um, and uh, I got a book for you. Uh, this is my gift to you. And so after the service, uh, meet up with me out in the hallway. Uh, I'll sign a book to you. You can ask a question. Uh, if I don't know the answer, um, I'll, just, I'll just ask you if you've prayed about it. Uh, make you feel bad <laughs> about yourself. Um, just kidding. Um, anyways, so we'll have fun in the hall. If you've been here for a while and you, and you haven't connected with the church, and you're like, man, I'm, I'm feeling like now's the time uh, to really connect here. Also, just meet up with me in the hallway. Okay, we'll get you one of these. And then as Faith was saying, uh, tomorrow night is our Eden Connect. And so I'll be going through membership and talking about an, uh, a biblical uh, precedent or uh, uh, an apostolic kingdom model for it, uh, what it is, what it's not. Uh, so even if you don't make this church your home, uh, it'll be a good educational opportunity so we can get you uh, uh, plugged into a good, into a good place. Uh, Bob Jones used to say, no roots, no fruits. And if you don't have roots, you're like a tumbleweed. And you kind of get blown here and there and, and everywhere. So anyways, that'll be good. Uh, you'll like this. Also, my new book's coming out here at the beginning of March. And so what I would do is I'd get this one. And then in a few more weeks, come and get the new one. Uh, and, um, and you don't have to lie, just... Uh, uh, I don't know. You'll find a way to justify it. So and, and we'll get you both books for the price of one. Uh, that's free. Okay, good. Everybody there? Revelation chapter one. Responsive you are. Mm -hmm. All right, let's stand up to our feet. We're going to read the, the word uh, together. Uh, Revelation uh, chapter one. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, this is the purpose of this book. This is not the book of Revelations. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. He, he is the key. We find him, and then he interprets uh, the rest of the text. Uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads it, the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it, and blessed are those who keep it. Okay? So uh, just declare to you right now, I'll read it, okay? I'll hear it, and I'll keep it. Um, yeah, faith without works is, we already did that, didn't we? All right, let's, all right, let's, let's, all right. For the time is near, verse 4, John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you in peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Aren't you thankful that Jesus has authority over the power of sin? By his blood and has made us, fashioned us, formed us, perfected us into a kingdom, priest to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him, even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother, am partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus Christ was on the island called Patmos on the account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you, have seen, what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands, the reading of the word. Lord, we honor you 
we love you. We count it such a blessing to be a part of what you are doing on the earth. Father, I thank you, Lord, for these wild ones that make up this company here in Eden. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have saved us from ourselves. You have saved us from the principalities and powers of this world. And now you are using us to bring forth the gospel of the good news of the kingdom to those who are suffering. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would inspire courage in our hearts. Lord, I ask, Lord, that where there's been doubt and unbelief, Lord, that it would be purged in Jesus' name, that we'd leave here with a joyful courage that would fuel us to do the things of the kingdom, Lord, to reveal you. Father, I thank you, Lord, it says in your word, Lord, that as we see you, we would be like you. And Father, I pray, Lord, as we read your word today, we would see you, we would hear you, and we'd be transformed by you. For your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. All right, God bless you as you're, as you're seated. All right. The book of Revelation was written to uh, seven churches. It was written to them and for us. So seven is the number for completion. It's the number for wholeness. Um, this letter was written to the seven churches in Asia Minor. So these are like uh, the known world at this time. Okay? But this letter is actually written for the church of Jesus Christ. This, this letter was written to them, for us, we, the church. Just to clear with me right now, we are his church. Yeah, the, the ecclesia, ecclesia, uh, or as uh, John MacArthur calls it, the ecclesia, right? Uh, I remember I was talking with Georgian Banoff, and he goes, I don't know how, how, how you say ecclesia, you know, and I, and I don't know. We were having a good, a good, a good laugh about that uh, on the phone. The, the ecclesia, the called, the called out ones, called out of darkness, called into his, his glorious Light. This is the word that gets translated church. Uh, this is the word that Jesus used when he uh, communicated to Peter uh, on this Petros, on this rock. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail uh, against it. Uh, this was a persecuted church uh, that would receive a letter, uh, that would receive this book. Okay? Uh, many today when they read the book of Revelation, it kind of weirds them out a little bit. Some people get a little bit bummed out. Uh, one really cool girl I met out in the hallway a couple weeks ago, I asked her, have you ever studied the book of Revelation? And she goes, well, I tried, but it's a little scary. I said, yeah, I, I, I get it. Um, I talked to a person uh, last week in, in the hallway and, and asked them if they've studied Revelation. They said, yeah, I was a part of a church that went through it, uh, but I've never heard somebody um, teach Revelation so optimistically, <laughs> so joyfully. Yeah, if, if you would have been in one of these seven churches and you would have received this word um, from John, it would have inspired great courage in your heart. This would have been, this would have been like a, 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 a loaf of fresh baked bread for a church that was starving for revelation of the, of the Christ. This letter is, this book is a love letter, okay, uh, from Jesus himself. There's many different letters in your Bible, okay? Even Paul wrote seven different letters. But this is the only letter to the church directly from Jesus himself. So it's a pretty big deal. And we receive this letter. We, re we receive uh, this, the, this, this because we are the church. We are his church. This is for us. This is a gift by which we get to discover him. Jesus uncensored. Jesus unveiled. Jesus undisclosed. Okay. Um, and yet, okay, uh, there is massive, massive attack against the church when this was written. We'll see this here in a second where John says, I'm writing this to you from the island where I've been banished. Okay, where I've been imprisoned. I, I write this to you because I get it. You're being persecuted, and I'm writing from this place of persecution. Okay, um, all this talk about persecution. What's, what's up with persecution? Now, this points to the fact, 
okay, that there is an enemy. Okay, there is an enemy that hates you. Why? Because you have been knit into the body of Christ. Now, Christ was not Jesus' last name. It wasn't like Darren's thought, right, Jesus Christ. Christ is a title that means the anointed one, the smeared one. If Christ is the head and you are the body, if you are anointed with his anointing, that is why you are hated. The persecution that existed then, that exists now, it is an attack against the anointed ones. It's an attack against the enemy, against the anointing. Why? Because the enemy is an antichrist. He is anti-anointing. So when Jesus was living, there were two different um, uh, forces of persecution representing two different spirits that were coming after the anointing. These are the same two spirits that, that go after the anointing today. It's a religious spirit, okay, and a political spirit. Uh, the book of Revelation is going to take this on head on, okay? Uh, these, the, uh, these are um, two nasty spirits, okay, and they're like, in the spirit realm, they're like kissing cousins. Th they are nasty, anti-Christ, and the thing about it is, is that they always come to strangle out the anointing. They always come uh, to bring an end to a move of the Spirit, to bring an end to the move of God. That any place where Jesus is being lifted up, that anywhere uh, where, where, where the headship of Jesus is being lifted up, you will find the anointing coming from the head down onto the body. So if Jesus is the head and the church is the body, okay, then the antichrist spirit comes, okay, the persecution comes, religious persecution, okay, political persecution, and it comes from every angle, soon, 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 soon. to do what? Um, to bring forth a divorce between the head and the body, to, to, to separate the body of Christ from the source of the anointing. And so uh, this is the dynamic that we see in the first century. Revival, right? The saints are going, they're leading people to Jesus. There's the supernatural. This is a time of revival and harvest, okay? And, uh, and you, you can study moves of God, okay? You can study this pattern over and over and over. God begins to move, okay? Signs, wonders, miracles, the declaration of the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? And there will be two opposing factors, okay? And they, they, they look like two, two different spirits. They are the same spirit, okay? And, and you feel the tension. I promise you this, this year, if you, <laughs> okay, um, come on, can we just be honest for a second? You feel this tension right now, don't you? You feel the religious spirit, okay? okay? And, and if we're honest, it's a seductive spirit. And, okay, and even those of us who brag that we are the least religious, we these days feel the seduction of a religious spirit to partner with it and to begin attacking those who are in our very own body. If you accidentally begin to partner with a religious spirit, you will become a cancer in your own body, subverting the unity of the faith within our body. This is what we feel. We're going to be feeling this, okay? And, and I'm, not, I'm not a prophet. I'm not saying this as a, this, this next year I declare I see the uprising of two spirits, of two demons, okay? It's a spirit of religion, a uh, political spirit. I saw them in a dream realm. No. No, this is church history. This is the fact that, that America thinks in four-year cycles, four-year political cycles, Okay? And the enemy comes to exploit these cycles, these seasons, okay? And so you see this religious spirit, a political spirit, okay? And it, and it comes to strangle out the anointing, to divorce the, the head, Jesus, from the church and from the body, okay? And it just, it, and it just looks like, just looks like the, the, the church takes up the right to bear arms and we just start shooting everything. We just start shooting everybody, and we feel morally superior to other people because of our ability to attack. 
okay? Now, it says John, John here goes, um, I, John, your brother, okay, partner, okay, partner in the tribulation, partner in the enemy's onslaught to take out the anointing, to, to crush out the vibrancy of the church, okay? He says, uh, uh, in the king of patient and endurance, that are in Jesus. He goes, I was on the island called Patmos, okay, on the account of the word of God, the testimony of Jesus. My declaration of him is what put me here. Verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, okay? The Lord's day is the day of the Lord, okay? This would have been Sunday, the, the day that the church celebrated the resurrection of Christ, okay? The early church instituted the day of the Lord each week, the Lord's Day, so that once a week, the first day of each week, the church would come together to celebrate the resurrection of King Jesus. And that's why we're here. Happy Sunday. Happy first day of the week. We'll begin this week by coming together to do what? To celebrate the resurrection of King Jesus. He, he died and he resurrected from death. Okay. The early church also instituted uh, Easter. Okay, and, uh, and I'm going to do a video on, uh, on Easter because uh, there's been a lot, of, a lot of stuff over the years about the, the pagan roots of, of Easter and all about the Easter bunny and, and, the, and the eggs and, and the goddess of fertility. And, if you, and I've had people say if you, if you celebrate Easter, um, you're, ce you're, you're celebrating the devil and you're a pagan. Um, most of this is, is, is fear-based clickbait, okay, that is not actually rooted in church history. So I'm going to do a video because I can't get into it with you right now. I'm going to set it up for you, okay? Um, it, it, it's, it's pretty epic. Easter was, was very important in the early church because it was the annual moment where the whole church, okay? You got the Orthodox church, and we'll get into some of that. But you got once a year where the whole church would celebrate the day of the resurrection of our Lord. Okay, it's the Lord's Day. John is worshiping. Okay, and he gets caught up. Okay, he gets wrapped up. Now, the word rapture is not used in the book of Revelation. Okay, hate to disappoint you. Um, however, John gets caught up four times. He gets wrapped up four times. John gets raptured four times. In fact, um, that's kind of how we're going to study the book. We're going to look at the four raptures of John, the four catching ups. Okay. And that'll be, uh, that'll be good. So in the Lord's day, I was caught up in the spirit. I was raptured. This wasn't a, this wasn't a vision, okay? This was, a, this was an ecstasy. This was, this was sucked up, okay? okay? This wasn't just here now. No, this was up in the heavens, okay? All of a sudden, he hears a voice like a trumpet. And where does it come from? that's better he hears a voice like a trumpet and it comes behind him okay the voice comes behind in both time and place and when john hears a word behind him this is this is significant because prophetically speaking this has already happened now when we're reading the book of revelation we're going to hear these 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 keys these this, this, this word choice is very significant because the Jewish readers, okay, they, would, they would hear something, they would see something, and they would take them back uh, 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 into the Old Testament where it would reveal Jesus in the text. And we see this here. Very interesting. John hears a voice. It sounds like a trumpet, but it comes behind him. It, al it already happened. Uh, m meaning what? The, the Jews would have been taken in this time they would, have, they would have immediately remembered Genesis 22. Genesis 22, 13. In Genesis 22, this is where Abraham is about to sacrifice his son. And he hears a sound, and it comes from behind him. And when Abraham turns around, he's about to sacrifice his son. He's got, he's got the knife. He hears a sound, it comes from behind him, and when he turns around, he sees the ram. He sees the gift that God has sent to bring freedom and deliverance to his son. Interesting. 
So what, what's going on here? Jesus references this text in John 8, 56 to 58. We're going to look at this together. In John 8, 56 to 58, Jesus is talking, your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. This is Jesus talking to the Jewish people. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Okay, 57. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and yet you've seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham, before Abraham was, I am. Okay, let me, let me tell you what's going on here. Um, uh, Jesus says, Abraham looked into the future and saw me when he heard the sound and looked back. Okay, um, you think he just saw a ram. But it says there, Abraham looked back, he lifted his eyes up. And he saw the gift that God was sending to save humanity. This wasn't just a ram. This was the lamb. Abraham looked back and saw the only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life life this has already happened a sound came from behind like the sound of a trumpet write what you see in a book this is a command that Jesus gives to John and the command is I'm about to show you some stuff write it down and I want you to to send this information okay these letters to the seven churches the church of Ephesus Smyrna Pergamum Thyatira to Sardis Philadelphia and Laodicea he says, um, okay, uh, send this, verse 12. Then I turned to look at the voice. So John hears a voice like a trumpet. It's coming from behind him. Write down what you see. And now John is about to turn around. Put yourself in his shoes. You're worshiping the Lord on the Lord's day. You feel the presence of the Lord. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that good? Okay? And all of a sudden, you realize this isn't just the presence of the Lord. This is, these are the arms of the Lord. He is picking me up off the earth. Now he is taking me out of this realm into his realm. And then he hears the voice of the Lord. Write down the things that I'm about to, that I'm about to show you. And now John is about to turn around. He's about to turn around to, the text says, to see the voice. Think about that for a second. How do you see a voice? All right. So he turns around, and when he does, he sees the golden lampstands. All right. This is a big deal. Why? Because next week we're going to talk about when John sees Jesus. Jesus unveiled, Jesus uncensored, the face, the face of Jesus. Okay, this is going to be a big deal. So that is in the text. But it says that John hears the voice. It's like a trumpet. It comes from behind him. And when he whips around, he doesn't see Jesus. He sees the lampstands. He sees the churches. All right, last week we were looking at the greeting from the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. There's a greeting from the Ancient of Days, the Great I Am. Um, there's a greeting from the seven spirits of God that are before the throne, okay? So the, the, it begins with, here we go, the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is how you're receiving the revelation. It is coming from Jesus through the messenger, the Spirit, to John, to the seven churches, right? And now, here comes the voice of the Lord. Write down what you see. John whips around and he sees the seven churches, but he sees them as the symbol of the lampstand. Now, I'm going to show you, we're going to go into the future a little bit because this is revelation, isn't it? 
All right, Revelation chapter four, verse five. And here maybe we put that one up, that works okay. Boom, from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and pearls of thunder. And before the throne were the seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. Okay, the seven torches of fire or the seven lamps, all right? And now this is a big deal. Why? Because all of a sudden we begin to see lampstands and lamps. We see seven churches, seven being the number of completion and wholeness. It's a letter to seven churches, but it's a letter to the church. And all of a sudden we begin to get this imagery imagery that the jewish people would have understood imagery of the of the golden candlestick okay of the menorah in the in the temple uh, check this out G okay the first thing he sees he turns around he hears the voice and he doesn't see jesus yet he sees the church and it's symbolic okay of of seven lampstands amir I'll, I'll, can i have you put up the the image of the of the menorah here and here we see the seven spirits of God, wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord. Okay, wisdom and understanding go together, hand in hand. Okay, counsel and might to come together, hand in hand. Count knowledge and the fear of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord. Very interesting because we don't normally picture that kind of imagery where you have a lamp, you know, almost like, almost like the, 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 the one that Aladdin was in, kind of like the little lamp full of oil. But it, the lamps were shallow, okay? And they had to be filled with oil. In fact, the priest in the temple would have to make sure that the lamps were always filled with oil, okay? There was a lot of work making sure that the lamps were filled with oil. But here, my friends, these are not lamps unto themselves, these are lamps that are on lampstands. Um, this is an oil coming from the, 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 from the Lord himself. Come, and this is what we were looking at, Jesus. This is, okay, the seven spirits of God, seven meaning complete, meaning wholeness. This is the spirit without measure that was on Christ, the head. Christ is the head, the church is the body, and this is a prophetic look at, at the first thing, the first thing that John sees. He sees the church, he sees the lampstands, and we see the relationship between the seven spirits of God, okay? The lamps on the lampstands connected to Christ himself, the source of the oil and this is this should be quite exciting uh, for us because we're going to transition even next week he's going to look and he's going to see Jesus and where's Jesus going to be he's going to be standing in the middle of the seven churches big this is a big deal for us so the first thing he's going to see is the operation of the church, the operation and the relationship between the church and the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, the seven spirits of God. Okay, that word spirit there is translated pneuma. Okay, here you have, it's the breath. It's the same breath that came into Adam when, when God breathed into Adam and, and life uh, filled him. Okay, this is, this is the spirit without measure on the church connected with Christ you are not going to run out of anointing when you are connected with Christ okay and, and 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 here's something else that is kind of cool if this is true then you might not know what to do and you might feel like a failure you might feel limited in knowledge but don't let your feelings dictate your reality let the truth dictate your reality. The truth is you're connected to him. You've been piped into him. You're not shallow. And you don't just have a little bit of oil. You are connected to the vine and the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon you because he has anointed you. My friend, I don't know how you're feeling, but the truth is that your head, Christ, 
is the smeared one, the anointed one, right? And you don't need a new anointing, okay? You don't need more anointing. We need to wake up that we are the church. We are the body. He is the head. We've been piped into him and therefore we get to operate with wisdom and understanding counsel and might knowledge and the fear of the lord um uh, the, 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 these spirits they don't come and go we don't come and go we don't visit holy spirit holy spirit doesn't visit us i'm not near to god and far from god this is the picture there is no separation we are in him therefore you tell your mind this is the truth this is the truth of god's word you know so many times where that the holy spirit is is moving and then all of a sudden the guitarist doesn't have his guitar in tune and and now the holy spirit has left the building because the holy spirit has been grieved by the guitarist that doesn't know how to tune his guitar and in the in the days of old preachers would get so mad and say you've grieved the holy spirit now the holy spirit is gone no the truth this the holy spirit didn't leave you became offended and offense is as worse as a fortified city and you shut down your mind okay you shut your mind down you shut your heart down you shut down your your ability to partner with holy spirit but the truth is the holy spirit is near to you as your skin is to you there is no near or far there's we are in him piped in the anointing Okay, his spirit without measure. And if this is true, then this would mean that the church is very holy. If this is true, it would mean that the bride of Christ is very sacred. If this is true, this would mean Okay, that the seven churches, those were his idea and not man's idea. If, if this is true, that he heard a voice, but the first thing that he saw was the church, that establishes a model, my friend. That establishes a precedent. That as God begins to speak on the earth, that the first part of Christ that this world will see will be his body. You will find his body. You will hear his voice. That the church is the fire of God that is coming from the eyes of Christ. That the church is the move of the Spirit. And for this reason, the church is enemy number one. Satan cannot kill God. Satan cannot attack God. So what does he do? He attacks his body. What does he do? He attacks his church. Okay? Um, there's nothing the devil can do to the head. So what does the devil do? He comes after the body and can i tell you something the biggest thing that we're facing in the church right now is body shaming from within but one when we body shame the bride of christ we are talking about a man's wife this bride of christ this body this church my friends it includes the presbyterians It includes the Baptists. For some of you, you don't even wrestle with that. So for some of you, you're going to wrestle with this. It includes the assemblies of God. The body of Christ is diverse, many members, many operations, and it is hip to take shots at, at one of the 256 million denominations that exist. There might be 256 million denominations. There's only one church of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what's hit. It matters. John heard the voice. It came behind him. And when he looked up, he saw the church. My friends, the church is a pretty big deal. And Jesus loves his church. And if Jesus loves his church, so should we. And that's kind of hard, isn't it? There's like a lot of dumb stuff in the church. 
And I think if you're older than four years old, you've probably been hurt by the church. There's a lot of humans in the church. And so because of that, it would be so easy just to throw it out in the trash and say there's too much humanity in the church. But the church is his idea. He loves his bride. He died for his bride. And his bride is the agency, the vehicle by which his kingdom will come and his will will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. The lampstand carrying the flame connected to Christ. That's pretty awesome. Look at the person next to you and say, you're kind of a big deal. Look at the person behind you and just say, you're part of the holy church. Jesus Christ. You're pretty valuable, aren't you? You're pretty valuable. You've got a pretty important role to play. Now you can see why the enemy has done everything possible to create this dualism, this separation theology. Yeah, to turn everything into a program. To get us to be disenfranchised. To get us to define things in a certain way. Yeah? It's pretty awesome. We are part of the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you and we love what you love. Jesus, we pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Hallelujah. Can we stand together? Close, close our eyes. My good looks to distract you. with me, just say the spirit of the sovereign God. The spirit of Christ himself. It's upon me. He is anointed. has knit me into his body. I am a part of the family of God. I belong here. I'm not an imposter. I've been created for such a time as this. I tried to run, tried to hide, never given up on you. He's waited patiently at my door, knocking on my heart. I'm tired of running, I'm tired of waiting. Jesus, I open the door. If you're good with this, just, just pray with me if this is all right. Just say, Jesus, I've been hurt by individuals. And in response, 
I framed out a judgment upon your bride. And now I declare church of Jesus Christ I forgive you I release you of all judgment Father I ask that you would forgive me for casting an immature judgment on your girl immature people who the enemy used to get me to curse the church. I will no longer curse the church. I will now bless the church. I will bless the body of Christ. I will bless the bride. Now, Father, I receive fresh information and revelation. My heart is open. Show me and speak to me about the role that I play in your body, the role that I play in your church, the role that I play in in this nation, the role that I play in my generation. I will no longer run. I'll no longer hide. I'll now engage in what the Spirit is doing in the church and through the church. The pain that I've hosted in my heart, I release it before the foot of the cross right now. All of it right now. The abandonment, the betrayal. The things that, that Sister Betty said, the things that Pastor Frank said, those are imaginary names, I'm not calling out those people. <laughs> I, release, I release that hurt right now in Jesus' name. And I receive grace right now. I receive grace and peace into my heart. I receive the love of Christ into my heart. Hallelujah. 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 I heard a sound from behind. It sounded like a trumpet. And when I looked up, I saw the seven golden lampstands, the seven churches. And there standing in the midst of the churches was the one. We're going to study the revelation of the one next Sunday. It's going to blow your mind. I'm sure you've never read it before, but we'll read it next next week. Can our um, can our uh, ministry team come up? And uh, if you need prayer for anything this morning, uh, you need a word of encouragement. You might need healing in your body. The Lord's doing something in your heart. I just want to invite you not to leave, but to come and receive prayer. Okay. And um, again, if you're new, come and see me in the in the hallway, and then. Come check out what God's doing in Eden. Join us tomorrow night for our Eden Connect. It'll be good. So I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. I call you blessed of the Lord. I declare you are loved by God. You haven't seen anything yet. Let's guard our hearts, yeah? Let's guard our hearts. Our hearts are the wellspring of life. Bless you. Love you.